Well, that's it. That's the end of our five day challenge. It's been a wonderful week of thinking about your teaching space, thinking about your lesson structure, how to set up your classes and then what to do once they're in your classroom. I hope you've really enjoyed the videos. I've heard from many of you that you've taken a lot out of them. And I couldn't do this challenge without this one last bonus video. And that is about managing individual progress because I think as teachers, that's one of our main concerns. We've got these big teacher hearts. We want to make sure that all of our students are thriving. No one's left behind. No one's being held back. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. At the end of this video, I'm going to announce the winner of our challenge, which I'm very excited about. And I'm going to tell you about a new package that we've put together just for those people who are brand new to groups and haven't yet launched. So managing individual progress within our groups. Now, one reason why I've got this as a bonus training rather than in the main kind of challenge training is because I'm going to make this very specific to keynotes. I don't know of any other system that's designed for groups in this way that can en enable you to manage individual learners. Um, the only other kind of things that I have seen and that are out there are where teachers take a method book designed for individual learners and they work through that with their groups. Now, the problem with this is, uh, well, there are multiple, but one of them is that individual workbooks are very linear in their delivery and in their kind of their curriculum structure. So you build up knowledge in a very linear way, there's not the reinforcement, the consolidation that's needed when you need to make sure that all of your learners are in the right place, that they've all learned what they need to, that they can all do what they need to. So if, you're, if your line that you're going along of, of objectives and of different skills and different, um, you know, um, understanding is um, suited to one or two children in your class, that means that there are some that might be left behind. They might to move, need to move slower through the book or they might need to move faster through the book. And when you've got this kind of next page, next page approach, it's very difficult to make sure that you're moving at the right pace for everyone. It's, it's impossible, in fact. The other problem with having this approach is that when you need your groups to be flexible, say if you start with a group of five children, and that's all you want, that's fine. But the following semester or term, one of the children uh, leaves or, or decides to move to, um, uh, or you need them to move to a different group. Um, and then you've got a space or two spaces that actually you can't fill because you're halfway through a book um, and a new student wouldn't be able to um, pick up on the first half of the book um, and catch up. So that, those are the two main reasons why I think that it's really important to have a very group specific program for your groups. And I'm going to take you through, as I say, I can only show you this through taking you through um, what we do at Keynotes and how we manage individual learners through differentiated challenges and how we are able to bring new children in to our groups um, at any point in the year. So I'm going to take you through um, the two beginner programs and I'm going to do this very quickly and if you need any further consolidation about anything that I've said do just let me know in the uh, comments below or you can email me. But this is our program for our four to five year olds, it's called Little Keynotes. And what this shows is that if you have an overarching um, list of skills and outcomes that you expect your children to have by the end of a particular level, you are then, um, all of your learning objectives are based around these. And then you also know when to move them on to the next level. So this bit down here tells you if they're doing all of this consistently and correctly, they've got the foundation for little keynotes and they can move on to the next level. So that's the kind of overarching plan that you would need to have with your groups because you always need to be looking for monitoring, assessing where your individual students are at and making sure that they are working towards all of these things. 
through the workbooks. Now, what happens is, um, do you remember when I talked about individual based method books and the linear approach? We go in for a cyclical structure here. So we've got five workbooks and I'll show you a couple in a minute per level. And what happens is I would say on average, the kids do get through around three before they're really solid and secure on these um, objectives. And um, it might, it once you come around, so you do one workbook and then you do another workbook and you're coming round, you're reinforcing the same kind of objectives. So we've got these piano foundations that we want them to be really secure on. And each workbook kind of goes back to the start at the beginning of the workbook. So we, we're going back to how to find a C and then how to find a D, etc. But what happens, that would only work if we also have our plan for differentiation. Because if you had someone who had done two workbooks and they need a third just to get um, everything super secure if they went back to the beginning of a new workbook actually they might find the pieces too easy so then we have different challenge levels for them to work through to make sure that they are um, working at their own potential their own level I would say the other great thing about this is that you could have um, someone who picks up everything really quickly and only needs to do one or two workbooks. Or you could have someone who um, actually needs to do all five workbooks, but you're not moving them on to getting those next set of um, objectives, the next like lot of scaffolding um, until they are really ready, until they really do have the um, the knowledge and the skills that they need to in order to do that. OK, so if I just take you through a couple of um, little keynotes books, you'll be able to see what I mean. Let me go back to the beginning. So this is um, just ignore these lines and these. Um, this is all for the commercial print. If you want to get it all sent off to be printed properly, we've got both a US version, which has the US vocab and the US uh, paper size. And we've got a UK version, which most of the rest of the world will use with the UK um, vocab and the A4 paper size. So here we have um, little keynotes, lesson one. So we are playing seeds, we've got pre-reader staff, but we're not giving them any false information. This is what a staff does look like, a stave does look like, um, but we just are giving them enough information to be able to access the learning. And if we go to under the C, you can see it's very similar. OK, so they might have done this and then the next book they're doing is this. Well, actually, because they, they're already fairly secure on where a C is and their rhythms are good, they can actually start thinking about um, either putting the right hand part in both hands or putting the left hand part in the left hand, playing it hands together as written. We have roughly four challenge levels per piece. And you might say, I have um, six or eight children in my class and they might there might be four different kind of versions of the piece going on at the same time. But what's wonderful is that individually they're playing what suits their um, skill level. But as a class, you can still play a an ensemble. You can you're still the objectives are all the same. You're playing the same games with each other. You're doing the same theory with each other. Um, you just might be playing a slightly different version of the song, but it still fits together because I really believe that group piano, the, the benefits that you get with group piano are really only keenly felt if um, you're learning collaboratively. So if everyone's learning the same piece at the same time and actually you get this kind of real sense of almost competition, peer inspiration, peer motivation from um, using this language about challenges and you get so many wonderful learning skills if you talk about right you know this is the way it's written but that's not the only way um, or this is the way we're going to start it but then we can move on to the next way and they become really um, well they've become problem solvers independent thinkers and they have self-motivation um, it, it's a wonderful way to develop their general learning characteristics, which we know music can do so well. 
Um, I'm just going to, you can see here, I'm just taking you through the pages, how the pieces develop and they, they are similar. They get more complex. Then after our most complex song, which is the G song, we go back to it being slightly easier, which is a very classic kind of um, uh, technique for kids, um, for, you know, for their kind of uh, psychological motivation. And then we have a composition in all of our books. And then we have um, an, a proper ensemble with three different parts, which I sometimes get parents to come in and help us play. So that's, there are five of these workbooks that look very similar to this. You have different games, different listening tasks, different songs, different images, a different conversation like we like to talk about in, on the farm or we'll talk about, you know, where have you been, which farms we've been to, what have you seen, etc. But under the sea, we might talk about other things. So it all feels quite different to the kids. But we know that we're consolidating and reinforcing. And it means that we can bring new children in because if um, Animal Alphabet was the majority of your kids first workbook and then they move on to Under the Sea and a new person comes in on Under the Sea well they're going to be absolutely fine because they're going back to the beginning they might just access the learning just at a less deep level than some of those kids that have been um, doing the workbooks before and I just wanted to show you quickly how this is laid out in our lesson plan so um, you obviously get kind of all of the um, description of what's in the lesson and then you get these challenge levels. So you're, you're told exactly what to do, exactly what the order of learning is for each of these lessons. OK, so it's really clear how to differentiate for each learner. And I'll just show you quickly because we have another point of differentiation here. This is the hello song. Um, and it's, this is storytellers, sorry. <laughs> this is storytellers for our age six beginners. Um, the hello song is found at the beginning of every workbook. Okay. And the difference you might notice here is that we have um, a reader, a pre-reader version and a reader version. So we can differentiate based on whether we think our kids need to learn, um, m need more of a challenge intellectually and start learning to read, but we don't want them to start learning to read until they're really secure on keyboard geography, finger numbers, etc. So the reason that this piece at the beginning, this is a really good il illustration of how this works. So the reason it's the, the song at the beginning of each storyteller's um, workbook is that you know, you can have this uh, one piece that they're familiar with at the beginning of the book. They come back from holiday. We're doing the hello song. They all know it. They're all kind of familiar. Or if you've got new kids, then it's their first time. But what you say to them to really clearly illustrate this idea that we're always pushing ourselves onto the next challenge is if when we last did the hello song, you played it um, in the right hand only, well then this time I want you to try and play it, uh, the, the tune, the right hand part in both hands in octaves. And then I want you to try and add this independent left hand and then I'm gonna teach you the chords. Uh, then you can play the chords in Alberti bass. So you're constantly developing um, their skills with one song. And that's why we have that at the beginning. And then we um, go through and have um, all of our differentiation as we go through the book. And these are made clear in the lesson plans as well. So I hope that that has given you a really good idea of how we differentiate the learning. So this is the reader version, by the way. And one more thing I wanted to show you is how we do this further down the line, because you might be wondering, well, that's all very well for when this is very creative and you can easily just say, right, let's add chords to it or let's, um, you know, do this part in both hands. But when you've got a more normal, uh, <laughs> more normal uh, pieces that are probably found in, uh, you know, the more linear one to one method books, how do you do it then? Well, you can still make sure that everyone's playing something that's um, right for their level. We do, as, as you know, we do teach by skill level, but even within your class of um, a particular skill level, you're going to find 
a difference in how quickly they learn and how they access. So this is our one of our foundation's one books. Well, it's the um, it's the lesson plans, and we have piano duets, we have ensembles, and we have solos. And there are a variety of things that we can do to make the learning differentiated. So this, for example, is our ensemble, and we have troll one is doing this two bar pattern in the right hand kind of question and troll two is doing it uh, the answer also in the right hand an octave lower troll three has got chords so when i've done this before i've had some people playing troll one some people playing troll two some people playing troll one and two so because it's question and answer they could play both and then my most stable playing all three parts together Okay, so that's definitely a possibility. That's how extreme it can be in terms of um, the, the things that you've got going on in your class. And it really does come down, as I'm sure you are well aware, to how much they practice. But if someone in the class is doing all three parts, that really inspires everyone else to try and push themselves to making sure that they are also um, practicing and, and achieving those high challenges. I hope that's explained how we differentiate um, what our cyclical learning structures mean for group piano and what they mean for individual progress and what it means to keeping your groups flexible and allowing people to come in at any point in the year. But if you need any further explanation, if you're not sure, please do just let me know and I will clarify.